Okay, I'm recording. So we'll go over this again so I can have this on the recording. <laughs> I care. I know, right? Curses should have been recording an hour ago. Um, so this is my play. I am going to say, I'm just going to gamble and say if Amazon gaps, and not only gaps, but gaps big, gaps above 3240, I am going to make nearly $900, $847. If it fails to do so, so if it only gaps to here, or if it gaps to here and then fades down, or if we gap down, I'm going to lose 130 bucks. So that's my setup and that's my play for Amazon. At least my computer's working today. Isn't that the truth? It's the small things that we become grateful for. <laughs> um, for me, I'm not going to set this up because the lower the price goes, the more premium I'll get. So if tomorrow we go down, there's a chance I'll only risk max loss of like 60 bucks and still make just as much or more. So that's kind of my game plan. It relies upon the odds of winning are low, but if we do win, we're going to win big. If we lose, we'll lose very small. The more out of the money you go, let's say 3,300, the rest of your list, the more. Yep, exactly, Justin. So if you went to 3,300, we can pull that up real quick right now. So if we sold put at 3,300, then it's actually not as good. It's basically, oh, there we go. There it is. It just didn't update. Um, so basically, this is your odds. You're going to now risk $95. Depends on where you get filled. You could risk as low as 60 bucks and still have a chance to make $900 if you're right. But that has to gap above 3300 So I'm kind of planning on it. The reason why I'm not selling one down here and planning on a gap down, because a gap down is, is decently likely, because it has to close below this, right? Most likely if we get a gap down, especially kind of into here, we fade. And which means I'm not gonna win even though I was correct on the direction of the gap. So if I had to sell one, it would have to be here because that way if we gap down, it would fade back into here and have a chance of winning. And I would exit as early as I could in the morning if we gap down because knowing we're gonna fade. In fact, no matter what, if we gap up tomorrow or the next day after earnings, then it's probably still going to fade some. So I'm just going to exit as soon as I possibly can and see if I can get filled um, in the morning IV kind of pop before it crushes. So the nice thing about instead of buying an option on Amazon, let's take a look at how much options, uh, one call option would cost on Amazon right now to do this for this Friday. Okay, so if we're going to do the 3240 call, it's going to cost you, oh man, you ready for this one? $2,600 to do one. And guess what happens if it doesn't gap above it? <laughs> You're going to lose all of the premium. The, the implied volatility, the volatility crush is just going to destroy the value of this option. Going to destroy it. So at the advice, vice versa, the other hand, this has no upside cap, right? So if you did gap to 3,300, you know, instead of making $900, you're making, you're up 11,000 or 9,000, kind of depending on the volatility crush that you get, because it's going to, it's going to hurt unless you're deep, deep in the money. So you need a big gap. But so this is an awesome way to still triple your income, you know, risk on, on this scenario right here, you would risk, if you wanted to sell the 3,300, you'd risk $95 and, and make $900 if you're right. That's it's just crazy risk reward. For me, I think I have a better chance of winning if I were to do this, where I'd risk 140 bucks and make 860. To me, that looks like it'd be a good play. So I think that gives me the best chance to win on a gap up into here. So I'm, I'm just relying on it to gap into here. And guess what? Even if we gap straight to like, let's say we only gap to 3230. Okay, so let me get rid of all of these other guys real quick. Okay. So even if we did gap to 3330, I'm still making, I'm still doubling my money. I'll be up $237 basically tomorrow. All right. So you're still, 
there's still a great chance to make money, even if it doesn't gap all the way. Um, but of course you have a chance to make 900 or 847 if it can get above your strike. So really, as long as it doesn't gap down, you can at least get out for break even or make something on it. And that's with just one contract. So the lower it heads, it, the better this ratio is going to be. The less I'll, I'll have to risk and the more I have the potential to make. So that's my play right now on Amazon. And we can see if this fills. We can see what this does. Again, this is just gambling on the market because I'm guessing which way it's going to go up or down. But I just have a hunch that Amazon will gap up. And if Amazon gaps up, it might gap up big. So like 3280, 3250, somewhere in that ballpark. Because I feel like everyone used Amazon more than the normal during this quarantine. And it just, everyone has such low expectations that any good news is going to prop this higher any good news plus the forecast they're going to come out and say hey we've adjusted for this and we're going to be profitable because i think they're expecting a break-even quarter they were able to cover their expenses but when you have low expectations it's easier to beat right um steven says it would be great to sell a covered call amazon this friday 3500 for five dollars if you own amazon yeah sure go for it because Odds are it's going to pull back on a big gap like that. It might run a little bit and trap some FOMO people, but, and then pull back. But of course, covered calls are fantastic. If you own the share, it's a great way to offset risk. It's a great way to bring in some extra income. And if you get called away, then, um, then awesome. You made a ton of money, right? And $5 selling covered calls on Amazon. If you have enough, if you have a hundred shares of Amazon, you get so much premium covered calls. Same thing with naked puts. If you can afford a naked put on Amazon, meaning you can at least buy 100 shares, which most people should be able to, then, um, yeah, you're, you can just, it's crazy premium on Amazon. That's why I sell credit spreads on this every single week. Will I be putting this in the Slack and when am I planning on doing this? So that's what I was going to get to next. If Amazon goes up tomorrow, we're going to, we're going to get a, a worse risk reward vice versa. If it heads down, we're going to get a better risk reward. So you're kind of playing this out of, is this good enough? Am I happy with $145, $150 loss, depending on where I get filled with a profit potential of 840 bucks? Am I okay with that right now? Or would I rather it drop even lower and have a chance for me to only risk like 80 bucks and make 950, give or take. So Angela, that's kind of where I'm planning on. That's what I'm waiting on. For me, I feel like this might go higher simply because you already had a trap. It came up and it's holding this EMA. We're having a lot of buying coming in today, actually. So I was really hoping Amazon was going to have earnings tomorrow morning. And that's why I was going to set this trade up, but it's in the afternoon. AJ hit workhorse target. Fantastic trade. So this is my setup on this. I'll be uh, selling the 3240, buying the 3230 with a max potential loss bouncing around 150 and 160, potential win of 840 if it gaps up. Easy money, right? Easy, easy money. Fantastic risk reward, but we're just basically going off of it needs the gap and it needs to gap big. And if it does gap big, then we will hit the hit the money hole on that one. So Let's take a look at Workhorse real quick. We got about 30 minutes left onto this guy. Um, wow. Moving. Look at that. Look at that go. Great trade. Again, I, I that's just not the setup for me after this many bull candles in a row. But all the power to you, man. <laughs> That's just great trade, AJ. Yeah. That's good. Thanks, Silly. Um, let's see if there's anything else we're looking at. Tup is just my trade just didn't do what I wanted it to do, but that's exactly how I would have done it. Volume, waited for a trap, short that with a target right into there. 
your one to one. So you probably could have had an entry there with a stop probably there and it would have been nearly one to one probably right there. And you can see how many people did that, right? Entered, exit, massive volume, got in, got out, one R, easy money. Um, let's see, Justin says, hope this question is done. No, dumb, no question is dumb, Justin. Why do we do it with puts, not calls? Um, for the Amazon trade? Okay. Um, because if I am selling a call, a bear, a, a bear call spread, if I sold the 32, 40, you would have the opposite risk reward strategy. So you would risk $865 and your potential, your potential win would be this much would be like $200 per contract. So, <laughs> AJ, I know holding me accountable, man. <laughs> oh, I didn't start paying more attention to that. So whenever you're selling a call up here, you're basically, you make money as long as it stays below your strike. And as if it goes above your strike, you're losing money. For me, I'm doing the opposite. I'm selling a deep in the money bull put spread, meaning that a bull put spread, anything below my strike, I lose anything above it. I win. So what I'm doing is I'm offsetting the risk with a big reward because the odds of it gapping and staying above this line are not super huge, right? There's 15% chance that it'll do that. That's why I'm only risking 150 bucks. But if I'm right, I'll make nearly $900 depending on what I get filled at. Um, so, that's, that's why you don't sell calls up here because you can, and if you're just basically, if that's your strategy, you're saying, I don't think we're going to gap above this, then you can collect really good premium, but your risk is going to be high. So if it does gap, you're risking thousands of dollars. Um, on the other hand, what I'm doing is I'm just doing the opposite. I'm selling a deep in the money bull put saying that anything below this, I lose, but I'm only going to lose 150 bucks, but anything above this, if there's a chance and I'm just going off my gut feeling, I have no idea if this thing's going to go up or down. I think that because Amazon was so highly used during the shutdown, I think they're going to give out better numbers than expected and shoot this thing higher. I mean, possibly 33, 45, somewhere up into this range. And if, again, if it only gaps to here, we're still going to make some money on it. Well, I might make a hundred bucks on it. I might, might double my risk, right? There's a one hour trade, easy, easy one hour trade. If it gets any type of gap up. So Angela says, I think it'll go up tomorrow. FOMC at 2.30 today. Should we do it at end of day? Um, I have sold these on, you know, they've had earnings on Thursday. I've sold them on Monday because the premium would just fit what I wanted. So yes, we could, if this is the type of premium that we want. Do we want to risk 155 to make 850? Let's take a vote on that. Do we want, do we, would you rather risk $95 to make 900? You know, type in a one if you'd rather do this option number one of go ahead and try to get filled on this right now. Leland's already in it. <laughs> Leland's a one. Hector's a one. Mike's an LOL. <laughs> it just that risk reward, man. You just can't, you're not going to lose sleep over that at night, are you? Um, James says, are you actually placing that Amazon bear call spread 3240? No, I'm not doing the bear call spread. I'm doing a bull put spread. Why not do one today and one tomorrow? Alonzo, you could definitely do that. You definitely could do that if you wanted. So if it does go lower, we could always just buy a few more contracts and, and it will go lower for the FOMC. I have no idea what the heck this thing's going to do. Never sold options. Seems like a good time to start. <laughs> um, the only thing you need to make sure you have a level five option. I'm pretty sure is what it is. Level four, level five to be able to sell credit spreads in your broker. If you're not a level five or four, they will not let you do it. You have to apply and say, hey, I've been trading options for this long. I understand the risk. Okay. You also need to be on a margin account, which I'm pretty sure everyone is. Those are the two requirements in order to do this. If not, your broker will reject it and say, contact us. 
So just kind of keep that in mind. If you've never done options, this is a great one to do. And I love doing these kind of plays, right? It's just a 50-50 chance. You're gonna gap up or gap down. If it gaps up, I'll either one to one it on my risk or I'm gonna hit it big and you know really earn my income compared to what I risked. So um, we can go ahead and throw that on. Why not? See if we can get filled at 852 for 148. Um, 850. Let's do 8.5 and see if we get filled. And if I tell you, what, I like the, I like your plan, Alonzo. If it goes down, we'll just add a few more tomorrow. If it goes up, then awesome. We're already going to be profitable. So let's go ahead and give this a shot and see if we can get filled at 8.5. Um, I'm doing one contract of that. So my max loss is 150. My max profit is 850. And I'll see if I get filled on this. Deep in the money like this, they're a little bit trickier to get filled on. It, it doesn't happen right away. And if this thing is going to bounce all over, it's going to bounce up to nine. It's going to go down to seven. So don't chase it. Just set your order and see if you get filled on it. <clears throat> Amy, I can go over the exact play again. No problem. So we are selling a deep in the money bull put spread. Okay. So basically it needs to be above this price of 3240 in order for us to make our money. If it does not gap up that high above that strike, we'll make something, but not a whole lot. We'll basically do a one-to-one. -one. And then if it gaps down, we'll lose our max loss. Or if it just stays, if it stays the same, we'll lose our max loss. Um, so that's what we're setting up. So this trade is, I am selling the 3240. I'm buying the 3230. I'm doing one contract of each. And I'm trying for 8.5 and we'll see if I get filled. Currently the mid's at 8.38. So 8.5 is kind of a good number for me. We'll see if I get filled or not. Again, if this thing can start heading a little bit lower, let me look at Amazon on a five minute. Ah, uh, it might go a little bit higher. Shoot. This was a good candle to get filled on. We'll see. We'll see if this thing can S curve and head lower. If not, yes, expiring for this Friday. Can you post the numbers? I don't want to mess up. Yes. Yes, I can. Um, let me see here. I want to make sure I have my numbers correct and make sure I'm not typing in anything wrong. So we are selling. Forty. We are buying the 3230. I should probably put put on this. Expiration 731 with an 8.5 limit. And if you, again, with credit spreads, I'm not picky on certain limits. So if you want to put it at 8.45 or 8.55 or 8.6, it's not like day trading where you really want to keep your targets the same. Credit spreads are not quite as liquid. So you got 8.3. Okay. So you might not get filled at certain things, but you, you can bounce it around and, and see if you get filled. There's nothing wrong with that. We're talking about the difference of 10 to 15, 20 bucks. It's not the end of the world for July 31st. Correct. This Friday expiration. And you're selling, again, you're selling puts, right? Selling the 3240 put. We are buying the 3232, the 3230 put. I don't know why that got all spaced out. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on with that. Sorry about that. And then I'm not going to use this as one of my official weekly credit spreads because it's just gambling. It's not. I'm not going to throw this as, I mean, I'll have to talk to Jeremy and see what it is. Um, what about buying another closer to the current price? Leland, so you're saying buy the spread. So buy the, I don't know what you're saying. No to sell. Um, like the 3,100. You can, your risk is not going to be tiny. It's going to be like a one-to-one -one no matter what. So if you're saying, let's go ahead and, and sell the 3,100 put. 
So this is what would happen. You would risk. So your risk is 167, but you're only going to make 332 bucks max. So it's just the risk reward is not massive. And so you can do that. And that's a great, you know, again, this is a really good strategy if you want to make 300 bucks because all you need to do for that to win is for it to gap up to 3,100, which is right uh, there. That's all you need. That's it. So any gap up, you're basically going to win on that thing. You have two spreads open, another for 30.95? No. This is just an example. These are not my open spreads. Over here, up here is my open. Okay. Um, these are just me analyzing certain setups. Yeah, got it. Cool. So that is my setup for Amazon. We'll see if I get filled on that. If not, oh well, I do, then who cares? And Leland, you definitely could do something. Your odds of winning are a lot higher on this 3,100 sell. But you're also, because your odds of winning are a lot higher, your risk to reward is still, I mean, it's still like taking a, you know, it's a two hour trade, right? You still double your money on that, a little bit more than that. So it's still a good risk reward, but it's not going to be a 900 to $130 loss, give or take. So whatever you want. Amy says, is there a target or will you let it expire? Um, I, it depends on where it gaps, but I'm going to try to close out. If it gaps up, I'll try to just close whatever it is in the morning. So if that means I close out most of the time, if it gaps above this, you'll be able to close out for like 95% premium capture the very next day. So I'll wait and see where it is. If it only gaps to here, then I'll just close that out and I'll probably make $200 on the trade. Um, let's see here. Alonzo, you said uh, you like the 3240, 3230 bull put spread. better than the 3170, 3160. Um, yeah, there, it, it really just depends on how much risk reward you wanna have, right? So up here, this makes sense for it to gap to around here. So the closer you go, the better chance you have at winning, but the less possible profit you can have. So if you were to sell the 3170, you would, um, let me go and open this back up. Okay, so if you were to compare apple to apple, so just one. So you see what I'm saying? So you're risking $230 and making $767 or $760, somewhere in that ballpark. So for me, I would rather cut my risk in half let me see what, let's see, we said 3170. Even though this has a greater chance of winning because you don't need a big, uh, as big of a gap, I kind of think I'm planning on a big gap on Amazon. And even if it only gaps to here, I'll make my hundred bucks and get out. So it's just a better risk reward. So there's no wrong, no right and no wrong. You could sell it, you know, like you said, like Leland said, you could sell a 3100 and make, you know, you're still going to double your money if you're right and your chances of winning are better. Um, you could sell the 3170. It just depends on whatever risk profile you're wanting to have. So you're filled at 8.45, Amy. I just feel bad. I don't want to ruin Jeremy's perfect credit spread record for the past like three years. If, if I'm doing this on a gamble to make this official. <laughs> so this is kind of my side trade. I do a lot more trades on the side than I make official, by the way, but this was one of my side trades that I thought I would just include some of you all in so that you could have some fun with me. Is the max win 850? It is around that ballpark, yes. Sorry, go away. So it depends on which one you're doing. But the one I'm trying to set up, it depends on where you get filled, but the max win would probably be around 845 or 850, and then my max loss would be around 155. 
So it looks like everyone's kind of getting filled at this price instead of 850. For some reason, 850 is being stingy. So what's the difference here? If I were, were to change this to 845, so that's $150 or 100, it's a $5 difference. <laughs> so maybe I should just, let's try 845. If someone just got filled there, let's see if that'll work. Filled right away. See how dumb sometimes things are? 850, like no way, not touching it. 845 is filling if anyone wants to get filled on that. <laughs> 850, no way, not going to happen. 845, guaranteed all day. So again, our max loss, okay, so I'm already in this spread. My max loss is $155. And my max win is $845. bucks. let us see what happens. Fun, right? Yeah, that's the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, it could go to zero. I'm going to lose 155 bucks. Cool. We're in on this thing. I'll talk to Jeremy if I need to make this official or not. But... If this is your first credit spread you've ever done, how fun. It's just a gamble. <laughs> you have 50% 50 chance of being right. Either it's just going to be, Mike, that's awesome, man. What a fun spread. If you win on this, pocket your $800. Woo, man. And if you had money that you just didn't care about and you did wrist 870, you're like, man, I could just, I could care less. You're looking at a $5,000 profit if it goes. Now, again, better odds than Vegas, exactly. For me, I don't do that on a 50-50. I think that's just foolish for me. I don't care to give up $900 on a 50-50 bet. I just usually stick to one contract because that's good enough for me. I'm not that greedy, right? $150, I, can, I, I don't care. I, I lose $150 all the time day trading. It doesn't bother me. So I try to stick around 1R. If you can do a 1R trade, it's like, look, I have a chance for a 3 or 4R trade ticket. Yeah, 8, 845 was the magic number. <laughs> and again, our game plan tomorrow, if this thing heads lower, let's buy one more contract because it'll probably add like 30 or 40 bucks of risk, right? It's not going to be that much. Or you can just leave it, who cares? But it'd be even better if we can get a push up into here because then this gap is that much easier if it gaps up. The lower it goes, the bigger the gap has to be to get up above this level. And to me, it just makes sense. If Amazon's going to gap, if they crush it, they're going to be above this level because they did it before, right? They did it before. Where was that good one? Right there. Boom. Look at this gap on Amazon on earnings. Bam. Way above the resistance, massive gap. And that's kind of what I'm hoping. And guess what? If it doesn't, who cares? 150 bucks. Who cares? <laughs> Hector, 845, no fill. 844, fill, for sure. Yeah, that's, that's the key, a, a $1 difference on your 100 contracts. On your 100 shares, I mean, or whatever, for one contract. Right on, guys, we're in this together. We'll wake up. It's going to be really hard to, uh, you know, when the market's over, over with tomorrow, we're going to be like, oh, my gosh, he's staring at the screens and seeing which way the candles go. Kind of fun. I remember I was in the movie theaters last year doing this and I go, all right, well, earnings should be out. Now I pull up my phone real quick in the movie theaters, which I know probably didn't make everyone super happy. But then I was, they were even more mad at me when I was like, yes, because I just made $900 for no reason at all. Cause I guessed. <laughs> so it's fun. If you don't mind throwing some in. Um, Angela says you're in. However, why did IB say I was buying a combo? Everything is right. I'm confident of that, but but it was a, a buy limit. Correct, we're using a limit buy on this. You're buying a combination because you're buying a long and a short at the exact same time. The vertical, the combination. So if I, was, if I were to unfold my spread, I have a long and a short that they filled me at the exact same time. So that's why it's called a combo. But yeah, it, everything should be right. And double check this guys, because if you click buy instead of sell, that changes a lot of things, right? We're already up 20 bucks. Man, what a great day. What a great day. We should go get us some ice cream. I'm going to get me a snow cone. <laughs> cool, guys. Our time is almost up. I'm glad you had some fun with this. 
I'll probably stop the recording now. Um, if it'll let me.